trying to do. We do look forward to working with them to landing this legislation in a great place. Uh, Michael Simeon Brown. Thank you very much, Mr Chairman, and it's uh, a privilege to take a call on the estimates debate. And that we just had a history lesson from the member opposite of the last 25 years of well, the Winston First Party stuck in the past. And as he moved through his speech, we started to get into the future, and then he started talking about the 90-day trials and the concessions that he's managed to get. But I, I'm not sure whether there are, who his colleagues on the, in the Green Party uh, quite share his enthusiasm, um, but it's great to see that he's managed to get at least one concession uh, in his time here in the House. I'd like to touch on a few things uh, in, in the estimates debate, touching on the education, uh, education report. And I think, the, in summary, what we see here is we see division, ideology and broken promises, along with some wrong priorities. We see in the, with, with, with the Minister taking an ideological approach to education matters, and it just needs to go so far as to see what he's doing with partnership schools, closing them down and, and with a lack of consultation and riling up different parts of our community rather than sorting out these issues and working with people. And look, these are some of the schools which are achieving some of the best results, and we've been hearing the submissions from these schools, and I know uh, Mr Willie Jackson on the other side, the Honourable Willie Jackson on the other side of the House, and I know how much he supports these schools, and it's time for him to take some leadership and stand up for some of the schools which he has supported so much in the past. And I look forward to the leadership from him and the Māori Caucus and the Labour Party to do that. Um, Mr Speaker, we also see that this, this government has taken an ideological approach to school property. It's OK to build a road with a public-private pu public partnership, but it's not okay to build a school. And the minister failed to answer questions as to why, other than it's an ideological approach to education continually, continually, continually. And Mr. Speaker, public private partnership, Mr. Chair, public private partnerships give the education, give schools and give communities the opportunity to build new assets, to, to develop them and to have uh, better learning environments uh, for the future. But that has been scrapped by this government and scrapped by a minister who is taking an ideological approach. We have to remember that under National, for nine years, we spent $5.5 billion in education infrastructure. Under the previous government, $3.5 billion. We increase education investment every single year because we know that it matters. And Mr Speaker, Mr Chair, that was through the global financial crisis, that was through the Christchurch earthquake rebuild. Mr Speaker, the national government invested record amounts in education infrastructure across New Zealand. Now I'd like to touch a little bit on some of the wrong priorities of this government. And you don't have to go far to see what's happened in the tertiary education uh, portfolio area where you've had billions of dollars being put into free fees for students, but how many additional students are we seeing? Zero. There's been no new students going to our universities, going into tertiary education, despite hundreds of millions of dollars, billions of dollars, going in to, uh, to, into free fees for students. Mr Speaker, New Zealanders see what this is. They see it as an election promise designed to get votes without incentives, without requirements on on students and those who are the recipients of that money. The wrong incentives are in place, and that's the constantly the feedback that we, we are getting out there. And we see there's a number of there's sectors, and sectors which are now wanting pay rises and nurses, teachers, uh, midwives, which rightfully deserve that, but the money has already been spent on free fees for students in order to gain their support at the polling, at the polling booth. And Mr. Speaker, Mr. Chair, we also have broken promises. I'd like to touch briefly on the broken promise around school donations. While they call it a delayed promise, a promise which they will uh, expect, it says in page 60 of the report, we heard that the minister expects the budget bid to be accepted before the end of this parliamentary term. The majority of us are alarmed at how schools became increasingly dependent on school donations and welcome the Minister's commitment to ending donations during the, this term. Well, he promised that at the election. He said that would happen this year. So how can, we, how can we accept this as a commitment that anything will happen before the next election? Or is he going to go into another election with the same promise, trying to ask votes? Well, I can tell you, Mr Chair, parents out there will not be fooled twice by this Minister. They will not be fooled by a bribe for... Uh, taking away school donations because he's failed to do it. He said very clearly what he would do and he failed to keep his word uh, in this budget. Right. Mr Speaker, we see across the education sector 
we see the wrong priorities, mis -pro uh, we have ideological decisions, and we have broken promises, and the New Zealand public can see that very clearly. Thank you very much. Uh, Jamie Strange. Mr Speaker, Mr. Speaker, thank you for the opportunity uh, to talk about vote education uh, around the estimates. Mr Speaker, we've heard from the opposition about the sort